Hey guys, welcome back to The Longest Journey, Chapter 3. And uh, the first thing we have to do, um, we have to go outside and um, talk to Zack. So we will do that now. And Zack is the biggest asshole that roams the planet. As you can see now. What the fuck was your glitch last night, bitch? I'm sorry? What did you call me? I take you to a top-class club, wine you and dine you, and you slap me in the fucking face? Did you ask yourself why I slapped you, Zack? I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. I'd call you a bastard if I didn't think you'd take it as a compliment. If I wasn't such a fucking nice guy, I'd smash your fucking face in, bitch. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me, April fucking Ryan. Uh, he definitely has some issues. So we go downstairs, and um, the first thing we have to do now is we go to the subway and uh, go to Hope Street to meet uh, uh, the priest and Cortez. You know, uh, I was talking to Barani about this a couple of days ago. Um, the theme of this game reminds me a little bit of uh, the Dark Tower series. Not directly the Dark Tower series, but uh, more or less um, the talis Talisman and uh, the Black House, which kind of are similar, or they belong to the Dark Tower series, or they they are linked to the Dark Tower series because you have the same thing. You have like the shifting, and I don't remember his name, but you actually have the um, guy. Uh, I think he's the, the janitor to some uh, amusement park. Uh, has like the same function as Cortez does. So maybe they're actually influenced by this game. Could be, if you ask me. So yeah, as I said, now we go to uh, Hope Street. Which is like the worst, worst part of town. Looks like he knows how to use that steel pipe. I think he's in trouble. The boss man. From his uniform, I'd say he's one of the West Side Kings. They got recruitment posters all over town. She's gone. The fat guy looks actually pretty weird. What what is that thing in his neck? So uh, yeah, we go to the uh, to the cathedral, which I was having uh, troubles finding at first. I wonder how they light those candles. Do they have ladders or jetpacks? That's a funky idea. Priests with rockets on their backs. That would give a whole new dimension to evening services. Yeah, we have to go to the confessionals. It's a pretty impressive church, if you ask me. Yeah, there's the priest, and but I'm gonna look at the picture first. It's a baby angel. A cherub? He's got a red robe wrapped around his posterior, and he looks to be in a hurry. I can't remember reading about this particular incident in the Bible. Maybe it was in the, um, the sequel? Nah. That came out only five years ago, and this wall painting looks a lot older than that. And now we can talk to the priest. It's a priest. No oh, shit. Good morning. I'm Father Raoul. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. 
sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razorblades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. Be careful, though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Do people still go to church? Yes, some do. Some do. Religion is pretty resilient. Religion, sure. But there's so many new religions, and people tend to abandon the old ones, don't they? They'll be back. The Voltex and the Manus of the world offer only a fleeting chance of material happiness. What they cannot offer is spiritual enlightenment. So you're not worried about the competition? We have over 2,000 years of experience and tradition to build on. I don't see us just rolling over on our backs and giving up. No. Thank you, Father. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. So actually uh, told us where uh, Warren Hughes is loca lo located. And uh, next thing we have to go to the building 87 right there. So who might that boy be? So let's uh, talk to him. Maybe he knows where Warren is. It's a boy. It must be about 15 or so. Sure. Can I talk to you for a minute? You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Um, I am. Warren Hughes. Never heard of him. What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. All right, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? A nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, there are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. I'm not looking for trouble. Trouble found you, girl. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. Real crazy in the head? That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? In corporate? No, no, I'm a... a friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before it. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's all right. I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McAllen. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. They keep to themselves. And they got some kind of cover operation going. But I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right. Here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! 
Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. You want me to risk my life for a personal favor? If you don't do this for me, I won't help you out. Besides, there's probably some information on the... Uh, Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's gonna help you out. I'll do it. Smart decision. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny, happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R. The Rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corpus didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away though, snuck out the window, and spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? And that's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not gonna let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time to get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. Where's the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. I'd better get going. Be cool, eh? So that was Warren, and um, Warren told us to go to the police station to do some uh, stuff. And that's where we go now, we go to the police station. And there's a lot of things happening at the police station. Yeah, <clears throat> I uh, took the wrong uh, exit. So do you see that dumpster right there? Uh, the roadblock, I mean. It's your garden variety robotic roadblock. You see them all over this pothole infested town. There's a small control panel on it. The display reads 3018. And we'll need that later on, but you don't have to write it down or anything. And the next uh, thing we do, we go to the right, and there will be a little uh, cutscene going on now, so I'm gonna be quiet. This is Lucinda Carlisle reporting live from just outside the Metro Precinct Police Station, and I bring you today a senseless and tragic display of technology gone wrong. In the carnage you see behind me, medical drones are digging through the rubble of a crashed shuttle for the remains of over 100 people who lost their lives today in an accident that could and should have been prevented. Only hours ago, a brave new World Airlines shuttle, carrying starry-eyed colonists to the Metro Tower, experienced an engine failure. And came roaring down on this street without warning, crushing three cars and burying nine innocent pedestrians and two would-be carjackers. The cause of this human tragedy? As of yet, there is no official report. We can only speculate, and speculate we will. Was the pilot drunk? Was he hopped up on Amethyn? Was someone aboard carrying a bomb? Did the manufacturers of the shuttle, Monster Limited, skimp on a part and import it from a bootleg factory in Germany? The truth could be any or all of the above. But whoever is responsible, and whatever the punishment, it won't bring any of those bloodied, mangled corpses to life. 
It won't bring Teresa Roseman, mother of three, back to her husband, Marty. That loss is forever, and a huge cash settlement can only ease the pain. It can never remove it altogether. Only expensive brain surgery or personality modification through proprietary drugs can do that. The exact death count is still under wraps, and work will continue throughout the day to identify the thousands of body parts that are being picked one by one from the twisted wreckage of BMWA Shuttle 709. What repercussions will this accident have on our city? Probably none. You fly a shuttle, you take your chances. This is Lucinda Carlisle, reporting live for the Metro Channel Action News. Back to you, Lisa and Dan. Are we clear? How did I do? Uh-huh. And what are the ratings? Five million? That's it? Five million? Jesus, we've lost out to reruns of Gillian's Island? What the fuck, Gregory? Why the hell did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me any of that shit. You were the one who said this would broaden my audience. I, I, I should have stuck with the game shows. Jesus! Yeah, that was a little over the top, if you ask me. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or something, but I didn't really like that part. But hey, who cares? So next uh, thing, we go to the station entrance, and uh, we talk to the patrolling uh, police officer. It's a police officer. He's guarding the entrance. Hey! How do I get into the station? That is the question, is it not? Pardon? To get in, or not to get in? That is the question. Good grief, more weirdos. Oh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm an actor. No offense, but isn't that an oxymoron? Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. So before I continue this part, uh, no, this chapter, um, I'm going to end this part right here, and I'll see you in the next part. Uh, goodbye.